So I brought this pinion gear assembly over here to my vise. It spins free, although it doesn't sound very good. Granted, there is no oil in it, but it's still pretty bad. Plus, got quite a bit of wiggle in it. There is this cover right here that slides on to the front of your pinion. There is a seal in here. The seal is here because on these Hunter Series tractors, on this side of your pinion is your hydraulic fluid reservoir. On this side, back here, is gear oil for your rear differential. So that's there to separate them. There's also a little o-ring, well, figuratively speaking, little. If I can get it to pop out here. There's an o-ring right here. That goes in between the hat and the rear diff, rear pinion. So be sure you change both of those. Now, to get to these bearings, you have to take these nuts loose. To do that, you have a lock tab here and a lock tab here. Now yours may be in different locations, but you're going to have one on each nut. That is just simply to keep these nuts from spinning. So what you're going to do is lift these tabs up and then spin these nuts off. And you can bend them, you know, with chisel, screwdriver, or something. Okay, now since my wrench that I had it was too small and I had to grind it and I really don't want to do that again. Broke out the channel locks. I got this big pair. I'm not sure just how big they are, but they're pretty big. I grabbed this nut here. I took this other pair of channel locks. I took and I just grabbed my pinion, the splines, which I know is kind of frowned upon, but this gives me something to bite into. Right here where the seal's wearing, those little silver rings, don't grab there. I could have grabbed back here, but this being slick, there's really nothing to grab a hold of. And it took a little bit of pressure to get this off. Not, not too terribly bad. But once it you know broke free, it spins right off. And I just sliced my finger open. Yay. Okay, so don't do that. Be careful of your uh, thing you just bent out of the way there. It's sharp. So, let's use the stuff that doesn't get hurt by having metal drug across it. Other metal. Okay. So, that nut's off. Now, this piece, you don't have to do run that tab because it'll just slide off. It is keyed. So be aware of that. Now, going back, that might be an issue. We'll have to see how the Baron preload works. And as you see, this one here is loose because of the preload on the Baron. So spin this guy off. You see our bearings are now loose. Okay. I would try to keep these nuts separate because the way that tab is, that might help you line everything back up if they're you know, the same sequence on the pinion. But here's our first bearing. Okay. I'm not going to cooperate. 
Okay, there is a washer there, so be aware of that. It's also key. Let's see here, our first bearing looks to be a HM803149. Now, pinion will come out. Now, that's kind of what I was suspecting. This bearing here is actually pressed on. This bearing. So we'll have to get the splitter out, get in here and get this groove, and then lift this off with the press. But there's your pinion gear for the tractor. And as far as the races are concerned, we can get on that guy really good and knock him out. And we can knock this guy out really well as well. Get this thing set down in the vise a little better so it's not so much force on this. And see if we can knock these races out. Just come in here. Hit your hand a few times. everything off your workbench. Okay, I think I finally got it to move. Ouch. So, now after knocking everything off my workbench, this bearing race for the inner pinion bearing is a HM804810. But now, I can go in here with hopefully a disc, catch all this, stick it on my press, and just pop it out. That way I don't whack my hand another 10 times. Okay, so I had a metal disc, like a 3 8 thick piece of steel from another tool that I had. It, I stuck it in there and it fit perfectly. Pressed it right out, worked great. It's a HM803110. So there's our two races. And of course our outer bearing and I guess I should have mentioned earlier that these are all different it's kind of why I'm having to disassemble the whole thing to get the right numbers that's it for this piece now to get our other pinion bearing off we're gonna have to take it to the press okay so for those who don't know this is called a bearing separator or splitter whatever you want to call it Basically, it looks like this. This is just a smaller version. It has these little ramps right here that will go underneath there and grab under the bearing. Let's see here. I think here's an inner race. It'll go underneath there like that. And then whenever you press on it, it will lift the bearing up. You will probably mess this cage up. So, if you use this, be aware of that plan on changing the bearing. You can tighten these up with a wrench or by hand. You know, I've done them both ways. I've just got them just finger tight right now. So Hopefully that'll be okay. I am under the inner race, although as you can see, I am catching the outer race as well, so it's probably going to bend up. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to stick my pinion down in my plates. Line everything up. As you can see, I'm like I said, I'm not the strongest guy in the world, but even without a bar on my pump, I'm literally pumping it with my fingers. 
I'm pushing that bearing off. And there we go. There's our pinion. So I don't see a shim here. So let me double check and make sure there is not a shim stuck to my bearing because some rear ends are like that. However, this one does not appear to have a shim. Okay, so our last bearing is an HM8048. Eight four three. So now I just have to get the new bearings ordered, and we'll get everything pressed back together, all reinstalled, get our preload set, and we'll be ready to go back into our tractor. Okay, so we got our new pinion bearing, our inner setting here, and when we go to press, what we want to press on this inner race. So I have this old race that fits perfectly on that inner race. So now, we're going to take this assembly, we're going to flip it over, stick it into our press, and we'll press this inner bearing in. Like I said, there's no shims here, so I don't have to worry about anything. and easy. Like it should. Like I say, if it, if it binds up, stop, and double check, it should just go on nice and smooth. You just run it down until it bottoms out. I'll usually just add just a little bit of pressure to make sure it's good and seated. Okay. So, there's our new bearing. Just make sure it spins nice and free. Okay, next thing, we have our pinion housing all cleaned up and ready. We gotta press both of our races into it. Just remember, these are two different sizes. So there's my outer. And of course, it falls right into the inner. So you can't mess these up. Now, unfortunately, I don't have a big enough puck. So I'm gonna have to get creative here yet again. I have to go grab the old bearing races and actually use them to press it in. surprised it actually is trying to push this in there kind of crooked here's the older race so it should line up nicely just press that in there until you feel it get good resistance And just flip it over and double check it. Looks like it's fully seated in there. So now we'll flip it over and then we'll put the inner one in. Just want to get crooked, so I'm just trying to 
press on this front or ed front edge here to see if I can straighten it up a little bit. And there it just popped in straight. And there it really popped in straight. Check it. And it's fully seated. Okay, so now that we have our races changed in our pinion housing and our new pinion bearing on, this outer bearing will just kind of slide on so there's no pressing involved there. So now we can take all this over to the vise. We'll put our new bearing on the outer side and I'll show you how you set the preload on it. I just want to show you these. These are the original hardware. I actually took did a process called electrolysis and cleaned these up and then I zinc plated them. And I'll make a video about how I go through that process. Even this is the original housing. This, is, this was also cleaned with electrolysis. But what we're gonna do is first we're gonna slide our pinion in from the rear. Then we'll go our outer bearing. Like I say, it just slips on. We have our thrust washer, and remember, it is keyed. And then we have our first nut. Make sure it spins. That's all I'm doing. I have no play in it, which is great. That's what we wanted. Now, to set this um, crap, I ain't thinking this morning. It's a little early. To set their bearing preload, the manual wants you to wrap a string around this portion right in through here and use a spring scale and pull it and it says 16 to 21 pounds so this is a spring scale if you've never seen one basically you see these a lot on people who fish they'll hook their fish down here and lift it up and, you know, however heavy the fish is pulls on the scale now the manual doesn't really specify which direction to pull. I'm going to pull it in the direction it would spin on a tractor, which is clockwise. Okay, let's see what I got to start with here. Because I basically just have that nut hand height. And I got about five pounds. So let me roll this back up. And we're just gonna tighten it just a smidge. Because it doesn't it doesn't take much to get those pounds to increase. And if you've ever done a rear end that has the crush collar, you'll know what I'm talking about, how the, much fun those can be. So, we had five. I got six, so I didn't move it too far. I think it says, the manual says, on old bearings you can do six to ten. Which, quite frankly, if we're going to this point, just change the bearings. Put new ones in. Thank you. 
Thank God that missed the camera. Now that was, before it ever moved, I'm pretty sure, I was over 21 pounds. So I kind of figured that because it, when I tightened it there, it felt awfully tight. So I'm gonna back it off. kind of wiggle the bearings and start over and you need to do that because these bearings will wedge themselves and whenever you shake it it'll kind of release them okay I'm about 13 right there Let me just tighten it up just a smidgen more. Yeah, that was about 15 or 16, so that's on the looser side. And keep in mind, like I say, there's really no oil in here. So, it's of course going to show a little more drag. So, hair more there. Okay, that's about 18 and I'm good with that because that's that's almost in the middle of the spec so pull this back off of here now I'm hoping that I can leave this the way it is and it'll slip over a nut and it does not so I'm gonna have to straighten this guy out And I might be able to just barely straighten it because it's wanting to fall. So where was my keyway? There's my keyway. This one here that was bent is wanting to fall right here on this point. This one's on the flat, so it might be better to use this one. Which this might be due to me having the nut just on here backwards. Because, you know, like I said, when I took it apart, you know, if you line everything up, you know, in the same direction, you'll probably know and this will probably just slip back on. However, with me going and cleaning this nut and plating it and everything, I lost track of it. It's not an issue. Because, you know, I showed you how to set it back up correctly the way that. The service manual wants it this one here does line up nicely with that that one as well however i really don't want to bend it in the other direction because if i bend this in the other direction you know it stresses the metal and has a greater chance of breaking see this is the one i just bent out and it technically falls flat right there which is great but I'll be bending it backwards, which will stress it and potentially break it. This one lays nice. It was one that was bent this way, so I don't want to bend it backwards if I can help it. This one's pretty nice, so we'll probably just use this guy. Let's see how this guy lines up. Okay, and it falls on that guy there.
tightening this up like that should not affect our preload. So this one here is pretty nice and flat now. So I might use this. I'm going to use this guy towards the front, this guy towards the rear, which is good because that's actually two new tabs because here's our older tabs. So now I just need to take a chisel or a punch and just knock these tabs over. There's that guy. And of course, this one is a little more fun since it's going in this direction. This is where you really need something that's angled to get in here to press against this. Now, once it starts to lay over, it becomes easier. So, see if I can get that with a pry bar. Another option is, you know, a wrench coming here and get like a me mechanical advantage by rolling it. Let's see, a little cheap pry bar will do, do you any good. No, it won't. My workbench is hating me right now doing this. If I can start to get mint with the chisel now, or the punch rather. Okay, so there's our new pinion bearings installed. Now, the only thing left is to change our o-ring, which I'm going to wait and do that once I put it into the tractor. That way it just doesn't fall out on me. And as far as this guy, the seal just pressed out. I mean, I was pressing new seal in it. The seal that I got, I actually crossed on the SKF website to a 15141. When you push this in, the spring needs to go towards the rear. That way your fluid pressure pushes on it. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm, since I have such a huge lip here to where I can put this seal basically anywhere, kind of from there to there, I'm going to try and line this seal up to probably ride right here on this nice shiny surface just because it looks good now obviously this area here has never been war I could probably take and scotch bright that in all honesty and probably clean it up and it would work great this groove back or this line here is some pretty nasty wear on it so I don't want that don't want it there if I can get it Just from the looks of it if I was to take this and go all the way flush my seal would probably run about right in there now in my other videos I've shown putting some silicone on this this paint is supposed to seal it and I've put these in with and without silicone without issue like I say the other seal that I did in my other video didn't have anything on here that's why the silicone came into play. But this one I'll probably just press in and roll. That's pretty much it for this. So. Like I say. New Barons 16 21 pound pull. 
using your spring scale. You can probably find these, you know, pretty much anywhere there's fishing supplies, I would think. This one runs from zero to 50 pounds. If you're gonna work on these old tractors, I suggest go ahead and getting one because the transmission also uses this type of measuring system. So they're cheap. Yeah. Great little tool to have. But anyway, that's the end of this one. Uh, thanks for watching.